Hello. Hello YouTube indeed and welcome to this week's quick tips video. We're going to be tackling yellow today, a colour that I know a lot of people find really intimidating to paint. Uh, we're going to be showing a way to get yellow down without too many coats, get some nice quick coverage and then a really foolproof method for shading it in a way that looks just a little bit more interesting. Let's head to down cam and take a look at painting some yellow. Alrighty, somewhat predictably, I'm going to be starting proceedings with Avalon Sunset from Citadel. Just a great yellow for getting really, really good coverage really, really easily. Um, I'm literally just, I've thinned it right back and I'm just slapping it on. Uh, it looks patchy at first. I've said this before, stay the course when you're applying really thin coats of a paint like this. It'll look patchy at first and then as you get two or three coats on, it'll all come nice and smooth and you'll have no worries with it at all. So we're just quickly whipping around, getting that done. Now we'll shoot into our first shade, some Harvest Brown from Reaper. Again, I'm thinning this right back to a glaze, just showing you here the kind of consistency that I want for this. We'll grab the miniature now and start just pushing it up towards the areas where we want shadows. So we're effectively panel lining and shading at the same time here. As we push this glaze up, it's gonna settle into those little recesses under the knee pad and stuff like that. And we just let each coat of glaze dry and then we place another one over the top of it. So you'll start to see some buildup occurring here. As we go further through and get additional coats on, you can see it only takes a little bit before it starts to really show a nice color transition. Always pushing up towards the underside of the knee pad and down towards the bottom of the knee pad, etc. You can do exactly the same thing on any shaped surface, just always pushing towards where you want the shade to be more intense, away from the direction where you want it to be more transparent. After about three or four glazes, you can see we're getting a nice rich color now. I'm going to give that a quick blast with the hairdryer. And then uh, what you're going to see is some nice, beautiful looking glazed brown transitions. Okay, so now we're going to take Avalon Sunset again. This is not a glaze per se. Uh, it is very, very thinned. We're going to use, start using this just to blend out where the brown transitions into the avalanche. So this is just to feather out the opposite edge of the blend for all intents and purposes. You can see I'm just going around everywhere where the blend meets the avalanche, where the blend first starts. I'm just glazing back in the opposite direction. So where I was going um, from the middle to the top, I will be going from the middle downwards instead, etc. You can see that really smoothens out the transition, but it's still not quite perfect. What we next do is get now a true actual glaze of Avalon Sunsets. This is exactly the same color, but as you can see, it's much thinner now. Excuse my cat scratches. And we're going to run this over almost the entire area, only really stopping at the brightest parts of the brown pretty much everything is going to get a coat of this and what this will do is just tint some yellow into those mid-tone transitions and just smooth everything off a bit more you can go quite far with this if you wish to you can sort of do five or six of these glazes to really get it super super smooth generally for sort of tabletop to high tabletop i'll just do sort of three or four glazes and that gets it kind of smooth enough that from around a foot away it looks pretty much bang on wait for each layer to dry before applying another and there you go that's looking way smoother now much nicer transitions now for my highlights we're doing various mixes of Avalon Sunset and Skeleton Bone basically starting with roughly 50 50 
and then just starting to add more and more skeleton bone. And you're gonna see, this is quite sort of chopped up footage because I just wanted to kind of always show you the action, always show you the parts where I was painting. Um, but basically what you're gonna see here is just me applying a line, first of all, in the highlight color, and then turning that same color into a glaze and anywhere that the highlight isn't in the middle of a shadow, anywhere that the highlight is on an open plane, I'm then glazing up to the highlight with a glaze of the same color. Then I'll brighten the highlight again, shrink it down, and I'll glaze up to that one. And then I'll brighten it again and shrink it down and I'll glaze up to that one. And it's it's a process of a few steps. It takes a, you know, a couple of runs through to get it looking nice. Um, but the basic principle is just edge highlight, glaze up to the edge highlight with the same color, brighten the color, smaller edge highlight, glaze up to the smaller edge highlight with the color, etc., etc., until you get into a point where you've got these nice, smooth, upward transitions occurring on all of your highlight areas. So basically just the opposite areas to where we've shaded. So where we've shaded the, the back of the top of the foot, we highlight the front of the top of the foot. Where we've shaded the bottom of the knee pad, we highlight the top of the knee pad. Where we've shaded the top of the greave, we highlight the bottom of the greave, etc. etc. It's very systematic and that's what kind of makes it look pleasing to the eye. It forms a pattern. So after a whip round of doing that, that's what we've got. And you could leave it there if you wanted to. There wouldn't be any necessity to carry on. But of course we're not done. We're gonna grab some skeleton bone now and just put some pinpoint highlights on. Again, this is gonna be pretty chopped up footage, just showing you sort of me placing a few of these pinpoint highlights. Just really, really thin edge highlights on the parts that you want super, super bright. You don't need to uh, overthink this stage. Just the very tip of your brush, get it nice and nice and bright and get those really thin pinpoint edge highlights. And as you can see, that is a tasty, quick yellow workup. That leg took me probably about eight minutes to paint. Not bad at all, eh? Not bad at all. And there you have it. Quick, easy yellow as promised. Using that Avalon Sunset, leveraging the fact that it has nice coverage to be able to give us a quick and easy way to get that down. And then breaking away from what you may be used to seeing, using that kind of red tone brown in order to get some nice shading in there that looks a bit more natural. As a little note, just to tag on to the end of that, you could, if you wish to, overglaze that entire workup with, say, something like a contrast iandan yellow or a yellow acrylic ink and that would give you a much more vibrant version of the same workup. However, if you did choose to do that, you'd probably wanna go back in with just some bone color and pinpoint out a few top end highlights again, because it will stain all of those highlights, including your high end bright ones. With that said, I think that's everything that we need to cover for this week's quick tips. So I will see you next week for more. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.